Hello. Everyone. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Now, we've all heard of the legend of Atlantis. Marty, you've got to come back with me. Where? I woke up one morning, and my pinky was twitching, and, and, uh, and it was just persistent. And I just I, I realized that it, it just there's nothing I can do to stop it. Technically, my body is only fully at peace when my mind is completely at rest, that is, asleep. Low brain activity means fewer neurons firing, or in my case, misfiring. As I awaken, before my conscious mind really knows what's happening, my body has already gotten the news in the form of insistent neural instructions to twist, twitch, and contort. I blindly fumble a plastic vial from the nightstand, dry swallow a couple of pills, and then fall immediately into the first series of actions that, while largely automatic, demand a practice determination. The instant my feet hit the floor, the two of them are in an argument. A condition called dystonia, a regular compliment to Parkinson's, cramps my feet severely and curls them inward, pressing my ankles towards the floor and the soles of my feet toward each other as though they were about to close together in prayer. I snake my right foot out toward the edge of the rug and toe hook one of my hard leather loafers. I force my foot into the shoe, repeat the process with the left, and then cautiously stand up. Chastened by the unyielding confines of the leather, my feet begin to behave themselves. The spasms have stopped, but the aching will persist for the next 20 minutes or so. First stop, the bathroom. Grasping the toothpaste is nothing compared to the effort it takes to coordinate the two-handed task of wrangling the toothbrush and strangling out a line of paste under the bristles. By now, my right hand has started up again, rotating at the wrist in a circular motion. You know, one of the things that we're trying to find is, is in, in, on the way to finding a cure, you have to find the cause, and we don't really know the cause yet. We have some idea that, that, that genetics or genetic predisposition, you know, kind of loads the gun and then the environment pulls the trigger, but we don't know what, what, those, what those elements are necessarily yet. For those that, that, whose lives aren't touched by, by Parkinson's, may not know anybody or may not have it themselves, um, know that, that, you know, I mean, just basic things like it's, it very rarely is a cognitive, I mean, there, there is dementia and there is, but, but nine times out of ten, if someone's halting in their speech or halting in their walk, they, they get it, they're there. And so, and so don't, don't just treat them any differently. Or, or, or adjust your expectations of them until you get a real sense of who they are as a person. There's a difference between acceptance and resignation. I've accepted that that's my situation, but I'm not resigned to the fact that it has to be that way always. <laughs> 